In the past two decades, Japan's biggest problem has been population decline. The government has tried everything they can to fight against it, such as giving young couples financial aid and even creating their own government-supported dating apps. However, there is... Well, the thing is, Japan didn't do much at all. They, I guess they made a dating app, which you can do in at most one week, if you're a dev. And they offered like uh, one month's rent to those who have kids. So that's not that great. There is nothing that can be done, since they're about to face their biggest opponent yet. Oh yeah? Oh, Hatsune Miku! That's a Vocaloid. There are a bunch of good songs uh, she's used for. Uh, like Omoi, Theo. Uh, check it out. Mm. I love her eyes. It's Roy. Roy is a fictosexual. Fictosexual is someone who is attracted to fictional characters. And this... Mm. The thing is... I, I know gamers. You know. That may not be that rare. Also, I mean, if you we're just talking about fantasy, I mean, people are pretty much like that. This is his wife, Hatsune Miku. While I was looking for Miku's okay. history, I actually found out that she isn't exactly your wholesome trad wife, but instead has some dark secrets of her own in the form of... I, I kind of hate it that trad wife is, is a common word now. ...of another man. From oh my remember, god. Miku herself isn't a fictosexual, considering Roy, according to my research, isn't a fictional character, but in fact, a 58-year-old salaryman living in Nagoya City. Got him. It's actually a really good example that if you think that guys are, are soulless, then just look at this. Yeah, you know? he has a puppet just for uh, emotional connection. Otherwise, he's not having a great life, and probably he resorted to this because because of that. <laughs> Miku rose to fame as the voice of a popular voice synthesizer software called Vocaloid, and eventually even had her own very successful solo career. Once her star started to fade, she settled down and now lives happily married together with Roy. Roy and Miku spend their days like any other happily married couple. Uh, Driving around, spending time together privately, and going out for lunch. This guy is fearless. <laughs> Okay. This guy just wants to order uh, two meals without feeling... Uh... This, this is the worst cover, right? I mean, if you want to order two... Two items, right? Two, 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 two dinners, two, two lunches. And this is your cover? Roy has been married to Miku for a couple of years now, but has been living with the physical doll for quite a bit longer. Apparently, they don't have regular conversations. Roy talks to her for sure, but to him, I believe that. Him, Miku answers with uh, feelings and thoughts, according to Roy. <laughs> Miku is not the easiest partner to have, since every time they go outside, Roy has to dress her up and carry her around. Ah, uh, Roy, no! Do that after! <laughs> I mean, you can just leave it at home, right? I called it it. One could easily think this is just a regular. How heavy is the doll? He's getting some good exercise, at least. It's a regular love story. A guy meets a girl, they fall in love, she isn't real, wacky hijinks happen. But things aren't that simple with Miku. You see, she has a past life of her own. Roy actually isn't her first husband. In fact, Miku was and still is already married to a man named Akiko Kondo. Akiko married Miku a couple of years earlier than Roy, and the wedding was talked about all over the world. Since then, Akiko has been a vocal fictosexual advocate, and actually, thanks to him, Roy himself had the courage to go forward and also marry Miku. It is very clear that Japan does not respect the Damn, man. Same wife? <clears throat> actually, thanks to him, Roy himself. Since then, Akiko has been a vocal... This man is fearless again. <laughs> it was first. Vocal fictosexual advocate, and actually, thanks to him, Roy himself had the courage to go forward and also marry Miku. It is very clear... What's up with the marriage, though? I mean, if I was doing this, right? I would be just hiding the doll uh, back at home and like make sure that no one knows. It's clear that Japan does not respect the holy sanctimony of marriage for allowing this to happen. We all know what I'm talking about. Polygamy. All joking aside, I think we can all agree that marrying an anime character what? is uh, pretty weird. However, all of us are weird to some extent. Now, I'm probably much weirder than you are, but I think even you yourself have had a well, you don't know me. ...conversation with someone for 10 minutes, where the other person has left the conversation thinking you were weird for whatever reason. Now, of course, there are levels of weirdness, but the point is, may the person who has never been weird throw the first stone. So, let's not look at these people and brush them away just because having a doll as your partner is a bit weird. Because if we think about it a little bit further, it may not be that weird. It's actually kind of looks good. Well... 
Heather. It may not be that weird after- The, the, the door. I, I, I mean. Doll. Now, here's a couple of uh, incomplete thoughts that I've had while making this. When a kid has a doll and pretends that it's more than a doll, it is fully normal to play along and pretend the doll is alive. Like, when I was a kid, I remember once wanting to have a birthday party for one of my stuffed animals, uh, probably because I wanted to eat cake or something, but my parents were nice enough to play along. Now, how about if a parent had lost their child and were unable to get over it and had a doll that was their pretend child? It would, of course, be really sad. It would be a bit weird, too, but you probably would think about it in a little bit of a different light. All I'm trying to say is that there are situations where us people pretend a doll is more than a doll, and uh, we more or less accept it. So, shouldn't we also try to accept it in this situation, too? Uh, I mean, Ryan Gosling had a doll girlfriend, and uh, he's literally me. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I accept it. I'm just, I'm just not sure. It's good for them, and it's kind of coming from a guy, so not like, oh yeah, uh, I need them to be my husband or something. I'm heavily incentivized that way. I'm missionary. On another note, Misty from Pokemon was my first crush as a kid, so I myself am no stranger to falling in love with fictional characters. Some of us have probably even felt a uh, attraction once or twice in our lives uh, towards fictional characters. I mean, we've all played Overwatch, and you know what I'm talking about. On top of this, I've even seen what some of you freaks mm. do to Sonic in your fantasies. And I have to say, I'm impressed. Japanese society is a very hard thing to navigate due to its strict rules, and thus it... In this video kind of going, going the way that this guy's coming out through. It is very easy to fully drop out of it. In Japan, either you are in or you're out, and each day, more and more people find themselves out of social circles. Due to this, people end up as shut-ins like Chico Morris and seek comfort in their lives from host clubs and fictional worlds. In the end, all I think the people who marry a doll are looking for is comfort. In the 60s, a famous psychologist named Harry Harlow conducted an experiment with monkeys to see which was more important for them when it came to mother's love, providing the monkeys with food or physical comfort. A baby monkey was given a wire mother with a baby bottle containing milk and a clothed mother who provided nothing but physical comfort. In every case, the monkey would only quickly feed on the wire mother and then immediately return to their clothed mothers for comfort. Th Those are not great choices, I would argue. Not, not, not the best. <laughs> On top of this, when they were scared, they instantly rendered their clothed mothers, proving that to the monkey, the physical comfort of the mother was the most important characteristic of maternal love. If a clothed mother can provide comfort and love to a monkey, I have no doubt in my mind that an anime doll can provide comfort and love to a human trying to survive the tough landscape that is the modern Japanese society. When it comes to these two individuals, from all I saw, they seem to be great guys in their own right. I mean, just think for a moment how great of a guy Akihiko must be that all these people gathered to celebrate his marriage to a plushie. I mean, it's obvious to be that all these people gathered to... Yeah, that's a good question. Who okay. came? Maybe... Ah, that's probably his, uh, colleagues, I think. But this guy's already fearless. Of course he invited his entire company, uh, for his wedding. Uh, ...to celebrate his marriage to a plushie. I mean, it's obvious, right? People wouldn't do that just for anyone. Akiko himself has said that the reason he fell in love with... People wouldn't do that just for anyone. Akiko himself. No. Oh, what? He's a school administrator? Mm hmm has said that the reason he fell in love with Miku was that when he was 23, he was in an extremely dark part of his life, during which he went to a psychiatrist and took sick leave. During his sick leave, he started going to Hatsune Miku fan events, where he found people with similar interests. The community was tight-knit, and he found a new family of sorts. So, in a roundabout way, thanks to Hatsune Miku, Akihiko was able to recover and start a new, much happier life. Later on in his life, he considered Miku as his savior, which is why he decided to marry her as a symbol of his appreciation. Kondo says some people have accused him of being a creepy otaku, which loosely translates to geeks who live an antisocial life. Others have accused him of contributing to Japan's declining population, while some have even accused him of stealing their pop star. But that doesn't face Kondo. Nor does the fact his parents. This guy's just minding his own business. Those, those people criticizing him should shut fuck up. I mean, you can ex express some concern about him, but like, yeah, he's just minding his own business, right? I mean, he didn't have to come out uh, doing this. You could have just kept it secret. And basically, you're just inviting criticism. Prince didn't attend his wedding. He said he hopes his declaration of love to a trademark character will inspire others to find marital bliss in whatever form that might take. I simply hope people can look past these guys' quirks and see them for who they really are as people. <laughs> I think this guy has poor judgment. So, so an older guy alone goes well in in this day and age goes to the playground with a like a teenage looking woman doll. Mm. I'm I'm just assuming that this wouldn't fly as as well as he thinks. But apparently, it's just fine. Okay. Okay, so uh, Japan might judge you hardcore, but at least they didn't do anything violent to you. So, if they're happy, then all that matters.